What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, the WWE action figure setups do return, and they return in style. Brad, we're doing our WWE action figure setup WrestleMania 37 edition. So I don't think it's any secret, right? WrestleMania is coming up this weekend, man. I'm super excited for it. We got, you know, two great events, two even, you know, NXT events. We have one kicking off tonight and then one kicking off tomorrow night. But today, guys, we got an epic WWE action figure setup that I think you guys are going to be, uh, yeah, I think you're going to get a little uh, something special going on there, young man. So today, guys, we're going to break down the entire setup. We haven't done a setup in a long time. I think it's been months and months, but this week and next week, I wanted to bring back some of the classics on the channel action figure setup thinking outside the box battle royals we're gonna bring back some epic stuff on the channel here and we're starting off with this setup so let's shut the hell up and dive into our action figure setup man we got some pretty epic moments let's start off in the corner over here now don't pay attention to the the background over there yeah i don't like that Let's come over here, and we got Randy Orton. You guys know that Randy Orton is going one-on-one -on -one with The Fiend at WrestleMania, so he's over here in the corner trying to get his mind right over here. This is actually not a bench of any sort. This is actually where I keep all my pins and my markers and stuff like that. So uh, Randy's just taking a chill pill over there and uh, trying to get his mind right, man. He's got the hood on, probably got some AirPods in there, trying to get in the zone, ready for that battle with The Fiend at WrestleMania. So that is what we got going on over here. If we come to the left just a little bit, guys, you will see Bianca Belair and Rhea. Ripley shaking their hands right here and the reason that they are uh, tying up right here, you guys know that they're both involved in the big time women's championship matches at Wrestlemania and I think again I said it in my fantasy booking video man I think that we are coming up on a epic Wrestlemania that will uh, be like the marquee moment for these ladies in their career. So you guys know Wrestlemania 21 when John Cena and Batista had their you know big time moments that thrust them into the main event forever. I kind of see that taking place here at Mania 37 with Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley. So I got them sort of having their moment here, getting their thoughts together, man. Going to be an epic clash for their championships. Hopefully they can both bring home their titles, and I think they're going to represent Raw and SmackDown very well. Over here, guys, we got Braun Strowman and Shane McMahon. Now, Shane McMahon about to get plummeted through the table. You got the little barbed wire set up over there as well, but you know, they are going to war in a steel cage match. Braun Strowman and Shane McMahon. I think it's going to be a sleeper match, man. I think this matchup is going to be a lot better than a lot of people think. I think it's going to be super entertaining. Even though I don't give a damn about the outcome of the match, I still think that we're going to get some epic moments, and hopefully that takes a place right there. And I just had Braun Strowman right there. I mean, he could put him through the table. It didn't really matter. I just wanted to have some action there. Coming to the left a little bit, guys, we have Miz and Morrison. Now, this right here is pretty interesting because you're probably like, well, why the hell? It's not that interesting. They're just talking here. But it is interesting because the Miz is looking over at Morrison like, dude, I was literally WWE champion like six seconds ago, and now Bobby Lashley is champion, and I don't even I, I, I'm fighting bad bunny and damian priest at wrestlemania what the hell is going on so that's kind of what we got going on right there just rethinking life both of them kind of like well, how the hell did we get here brad coming to the left a little bit guys we have sasha banks with her smackdown women's championship looking pretty good over there stacking up you know she's uh she's got to keep her mind focused man she doesn't want bianca belair to knock her off of the mountaintop but i have a bad feeling that that's going to happen man and i mean i'm excited for bianca belair i think she's great and i think i like her in the ring more than sasha i like Bianca Belair a lot. I think we're going to get an instant classic out of those two, so I'm all for it, but Sasha Banks is over here chilling it up. Out front, guys, we got Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the Logan Paul figure up here doing war with these two, but you know, this is a rivalry renewed here at WrestleMania. I can't wait for this match because we know how good it's going to be. We know the history between the two, the, the just classic matches that we've gotten out of these guys already, so you had to represent them going to war here in the setup. I had to do it. No other way we could have done it. Right Right here we have Sheamus just walking through. You know, we gotta have the casual guys walking through sometimes. It really adds life to the setup, especially if you like get back here. It just really brings it to life, makes it look like a cohesive unit. So we have Sheamus walking around. You guys know he's going to war for the US Championship at Mania. And then if we come over here, we also have Asuka doing the same exact thing. So both of them are just walking through the setup. It makes for, again, it just kind of adds an element of realism to the setup. And uh, I really appreciate that about the setups. And if we come forward right here, guys, we have the Tribal Chief. 
Chief, and this just looks so badass. I don't know what it is, man. It's this custom head sculpt that I got made for Roman with the Wreck Everyone and Leaf shirt. He's got, you know, no gauntlets on. He's got his, like, joggers on. He looks like an assassin, man. He's got the Universal Championship. You got Paul Heyman rubbing the shoulders there, trying to get him loose, trying to get him ready to go to defend his championship in that triple threat match. And we will get into Edge and Daniel Bryan at the end of the setup, which is probably my favorite part of the setup, so we'll get into that later. But Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman right here getting ready for the big time matchup. In the back, guys, you gotta have, I mean, speaking of big time matchups, we have Bobby Lashley talking with MVP about their strategy for Drew McIntyre. What are we gonna do, Brad? We gotta get ready for the matchup with McIntyre. So Bobby Lashley and MVP discussing it. Need to get an updated MVP, man. I mean, that's sort of just uh, a mosh posh of two MVP figures. Really need an updated suited MVP. I know we're getting an elite MVP in Elite Series 88, I think. It's either 87 or 88. I want to say it's 80. Maybe it's 87. Regardless of the fact, maybe it's 80. I think it's 88. Just, just, just stick with one. It's 88, you dumb jackass. So hopefully uh, we'll get a suited basic or something like that. Over here, guys, we have Seth Drippin' Rollins and we have Cesaro. So I really enjoy this Seth Rollins. You got the suit and the glove on there and he's poking Cesaro in the chest and he's like, Brad, do you think that you're going to come to WrestleMania and beat me? I think th these guys are absolutely going to tear the house down at WrestleMania, but the suited figures really bring life to the setup as well. We got the gloved hand for Rollins, the man bun head sculpt. I mean, just look at him. He is, uh, he's looking pretty damn good if you ask me, but I had to add both of those getting in each other's faces. I think this is going to be an epic clash at WrestleMania, no doubt, and I can't wait for that matchup. If we come over here to the left, guys, we have my man Finn Balor. Now, I added this as just a bonus because I'm sorry for the for the darkness over here, but maybe I can adjust it a little bit. We have Karrion Cross getting taken out by Finn Balor. Now, do I think that Karrion Cross is going to beat Finn Balor? I, I do, and it really upsets me because that's my boy. You know, I'm going to be going hard for him, but I think Karrion Cross will beat Finn, but, you know, if he's going to beat him in real life, at least in the setup, we can have Finn get the upper hand and, you know, double guns to the back there for Karrion Cross getting taken out by Finn. So, let's go hard for Finn. Hopefully, he can get the job done, but had to put that in the setup just for just for shits and kicks. Coming up on the GM's office, man, actually, we'll, we'll get into that second to last, because I got I got something to go through there. We already saw what Asuka was doing, guys. If we come over here, you will see that we have New Day renewed. You guys know that the Raw Tag Team Champions are Kofi and Xavier, and then the Intercontinental Champion is Big E. I have them reuniting here in the backstage area. Coming up at WrestleMania, you guys know they will be together again, so that will be cool to see, but I have all the brothers hugging it up right there, all coming in as champions at Mania, which is really cool. They are not all together, though, so uh, I figured that'd be a nice little heartwarming moment in the backstage area. Over here, we have the U.S. Champion. We have Matt Riddle just chilling on the stretcher or, or the hospital bed, if you will, but he's not injured, Brad. He's just kind of relaxing, chilling off, shooting some b-ball outside of the school, and Matt Riddle is uh, just chilling out. You know, he's hanging out, ready to defend the U.S. title. That matchup with Sheamus at WrestleMania should be hellacious. I think it's going to be super hard-hitting, super physical, and I think that, you know, but before he gets there, man, he wants to chill out a little bit, but there's the U.S. champion, and then over here on the left side, you guys will see that Apollo has his eye on Big E over here. He's trying to keep his eye on the Intercontinental Championship, so that's what we got going on with Apollo. Not too much going on there. Okay, let's get in to our uh, GM's office right here. So you guys see there, it says office. You have the women's tag team champions, Nia Jackson, and Shayna Baszler looking in there, and then you have AJ Styles second. Now, I'll get into that in just a moment. Nia Jackson, and Shayna Baszler are spying on what's happening inside the office, and what's happening in Inside the office is Vince McMahon looking at all these women and like the women are like man this is the best you got for us tag team turmoil match and he's like well Brad that's all you know it's the best I can do and then they're like yeah Brad that's absolute BS and then you know Nia and Shayna are like you know and then Nia and Shayna are just back here trying to figure out what's going on there what's the entire situation but all the ladies are coming together against Vince saying you know Brad they're, they, they, this is absolute terrible couldn't come up with anything else man and I, I I guess he's just saying it. At least you're on the car. But yeah, we got the ladies coming into Vince's office, and then you're probably wondering why the hell AJ Styles is in line. So AJ Styles is in line because, you know, he's in the Raw Tag Team Championship match. I think him and Omos going after the tag titles, I think it'll be a lot better than people think, and I think they may even win the tag titles. However, AJ Styles wants to go in there and be like, bro, you couldn't give me anything else. You couldn't get me a one-on-one -on -one match with somebody on this roster. You couldn't give me a one-on-one -on -one match with somebody and have an absolute banger at WrestleMania. Unfortunately, Unfortunately not, Brad. He could not have it done this year, and uh, that's upsetting. But at least you're on the card going after gold. I mean, that's all you can really say. All right, guys, time for my favorite part of the setup. We're coming into the parking lot, and I want you to look at Edge.
Edge right here, man. Look at Edge, hair blowing back in the wind. He's in the convertible going right after Daniel Bryan. He's trying to run over Daniel Bryan for entering this matchup. This is supposed to be his one-on-one -on -one match. He won the Royal Rumble. This is his time, but Daniel Bryan is in his way. So he's trying to take him out before he even gets to WrestleMania. So I thought the convertible would fit perfect with the Edge head sculpt, the hair blowing back. I thought that was absolutely great. So he's in the convertible going after Daniel Bryan. And then uh, if you look over here, Drew McIntyre is just watching a murder take place. Nice. So Drew McIntyre's hanging out in the parking lot just watching everything happen. He's just a witness to the madness. And yeah, Edge is, uh, he's, he's lunatic Edge going after Daniel Bryan. But I think that pretty much does it for our WrestleMania 37 setup, man. Had a ton of fun doing this one. Again, there are a lot of fun to film up and, and set up and stuff like that. I really don't know why I haven't done one in a while. But I think this may be the return because I really enjoy these. I don't know. You guys can let me know down below if you guys love the, love the setups or you don't care if they're here or whatever the hell. But today we got to get into our random shout out guys and it's going to go to Eli Moody who says hey MDT do you still hate Bobby Lashley and I've never really hated Bobby Lashley okay I never really hated Bobby Lashley I always like I called him Bobby Trashley because when I wasn't when I was a kid I used to love Bobby Lashley and I didn't really know he couldn't cut that good of a promo but then when I found out that he can't cut a promo to save his life it made me be like damn bro that's pretty disappointing so I just dubbed the name Trashley because it rhymes with Lashley and it's kind of funny however I've always liked Bobby Lashley I think he's a physical specimen. I think he's a, a great guy. I think he's a great wrestler. I think his matches are super underrated. When I was a kid on SBR 06 and 07, I used to get this guy every single time. On the season mode, I would run season mode, exhibitions. Like, I always did my stuff with Bobby Lashley, and I actually am a fan of him. So, seeing him get this big championship push, seeing him in the Hurt Business is actually really awesome. And yeah, I know you guys are probably pretty shocked, but yeah, that's the truth there, Brad. I don't hate Bobby Lashley. I actually like Bobby Lashley. He was one of my favorites when I was growing up as a kid. Like, he came to WWE when I think I was 10 years old. And by that time, I had obviously been watching for years. But when he arrived in WWE, I really enjoyed him. Anyways, I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Don't cross the line like Edge did in the parking lot. Or is it Drew McIntyre for just standing there and watching like a jackass? Nice. You cross the